Um, we want to start now to take uh, some questions from the audience for Jackie. What's your opinion on how the media handles uh, the doping issue? The media has a job, just like all of us, and but I think you have to report, you know, the negative. Mm -hmm. But I think also there's not enough given to the athletes that are trying to do it right. I you know, too. and I agree. And so you have an athlete that tests positive, and I and I think that regardless if they test positive or not, that they're, they have to have a due process. Yes. And sometimes some things are link, linked. Leaked, yeah. Absolutely. Leaked out. Yeah. Link. Link in. <laughs> Jet lag. Jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and that's not fair to the person that's going through whatever it is they're going through. I think they have a job, but I think it also, it hinders and it hurts the sport overall because that's all that people read and see. And then all the, the performances are tainted or questioned, and then we wonder why sponsors don't want to sponsor our events. That's right. I've been a big supporter for Flor uh, Florence Griffith, and she holds a world record for the 100 and 200. Did you train with her any time of your life? I think she's related to you too. So will you talk about her? <laughs> yeah, they're related by marriage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Florence Flojo uh, is my sister, well, late sister-in-law who was married to my brother. And Florence and I, we were teammates at UCLA. And so, what was the question? Well, he was actually asking if you trained with her. It's funny oh. because obviously you did. Yes, we did. <laughs> it was really, uh, we had Florence, Valerie Briscoe Hooks, Gail Devers, Jeanette Bowden. You have uh, to really know your track and field history to know that group, but they all Olympic gold medalists. And one of the great things about training with them was all I wanted to do was if I could just stay up with them just a little bit in my run, and then no heptathlete should beat me. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you know, right. So training and running relays, and Otto and I, we talked about a story back when we were competing in uh, Mount Sac Relays, uh, a big meet in California, and, and at the time, Florence was, had designed these outfits, one leg in and one leg out. Do you guys remember those from 1988? Yes. One and before, Here's the back story. Before the, uh, yes. With the hood, yes. yes. And, but at that time, you know, they didn't really put the tight elastic in the, you know, on the, for the women. And so I had to run the first leg of the relay <laughs> in this one leg, little toy, and then this leg cut off. As I get in the starting block, everything creeped to the right. And I'm like, oh, God, oh. <laughs> And I'm saying, I can't do this. Florence like, just run, just run. I'm like, and you know, the cameras are right there, not in oh. front of me, but you know. <laughs> so anyway, yes, we train together and we try to help promote, you know, her, uh, her idea in wearing the outfit. <laughs> Another question for Jackie. Yes. Um, as an athlete, have you ever thought of giving up? And if so, how did you get over trying to carry on doing the best? Is there any athlete that doesn't decide at some point, I've had enough of this? Did you have that? You know... Well, Bobby wouldn't allow you, so you weren't allowed to, <laughs> you weren't allowed to quit. <laughs> it was my passion to really... I love running and jumping, throwing, and, and I'm an asthmatic. Right. I mean, I'm really having a hard time up here breathing now. Don't you still have, I, just I know, saw you but take I didn't want to pull thing. it out, right? Yeah. And then there was times when it was hard for me to be on the track because I couldn't breathe. And, the, and my, the thought of me stopping was like me quitting. And so my attitude was that can't quit. I can't, can't give up. This is what I love doing. And 
And I understand, you know, there's a, a, lot of, a lot of young people are torn between do they want to do this or their friends say they should be here, are they doing that. But you must find what it is that drive you to do what you want to do and know that in trying to reach your goal, you're going to run into ups and downs and that's going to test your character. It's going to test if you really want to do this. But if you believe strongly enough that you can do it, you will turn a doubter into a believer because you believe. Then your coaches and everyone else around you will give you the support that you need to go on and see yourself reaching your goals. I don't know how many of you have watched multi-events. You could almost forgive multi-eventers for wanting to quit. Because after you, I mean, we, we certainly see it in the decathlon. I know the heptathlon is, is, is not much different. I mean, obviously three events. Um, but there's some days after, there have to be some days after day one where you just like, man, I got to get up in the morning and start again? Yeah. How did, I mean, how, how does a heptathlete, um, I've, heard, I've, I've heard the athletes answer the question by saying, it's not 10 events, it's one event that I have to focus on 10 different times. I can never look forward. I have to focus on the one thing. Is it, is it the same for heptathletes? How do you deal with that management of energy and, you know, one event goes great, the other one right. is awful? How do, you, how do you deal with that? You know, it's, it's easy said than done. Yeah. Because amongst the seven, there's always one or two that you love doing. And those for are you, the, it would be long jumping hurdles. Right. <laughs> and those are the two that would let you down in a crucial really? moment. Yes. You know, because I try to run fast in the hurdles, jump far in the long jump, so I can run slow in the 800 meters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> your, your disdain for the 800 meters was legendary. Yes. But it doesn't work out that way. And so it's really the mental preparation, uh, the times when you were out on the field. I remember when Bobby would be in the middle of UCLA in the infield. And you could, and it'd be so hot, and you could see a mirage. And he wanted me to do these 16, 232 seconds. And I, but your mind is that you, you have to go through it because physically, you know, your body can do it. Is being able to have that mental toughness yeah. that's going to get you through. And you, it's like a an emotional roller coaster. One time you up, you down. Your stomach is up here then it's down here and you crying but you have to pull yourself together because it's one medal for 10 events or seven events yeah they should probably give you guys seven medals yes another question for uh, they could change that yeah <laughs> all right so first question is about being coached by your husband and if that you thought was i guess a help or a hindrance i i think it's a combination of both what he said because mm -hmm. I, I started running at the age of nine I got into the multi events by the time I was 12 years of age well, she's fi she's 15 correct 18 sorry. 18 okay. and I was a national champion at 13 and so my age group coach who worked with me from the time because we didn't have multi events in, in high school I only did it during the summer and so I would have to learn how to run hurdles because I didn't run hurdles in high school. I only would run them during the summer track. And by the time I got through in high school, one of the greatest things that my high school coach, who was also my age group coach, did for me was that I'm setting you free to go learn from someone else. Hmm. And as I went to UCLA, my high school coach didn't interfere with my just coach at the time, Bob Kersey. And then finally, working with Bobby with, at UCLA, he was just the sprint hurdle coach. The multi-eventer was always, to me, treated like stepkids. Mm -hmm. You know, like you didn't belong a part of uh, the family. So the multi-eventers would be over here, running hurdles, doing sprints, while the sprinters and hurdlers are over here, which didn't make a lot of sense. So finally, UCLA figure out, had Bobby to be over all of us. And one of the things that Bobby taught me was that I need to learn technique. I was playing basketball at the university and he said I would have to find time to come out and learn how to lay out in the high jump because I was jumping just like I'm sitting now. And I remember going to a championship and at the time Jane Frederick, who was our American record holder, 
that she was scoring over 6,400, 6, 6, and I had barely scored 6,000. And Bobby said to me that you can be a world record holder. And I'm like, yeah, right. And he said, let me break it down to you. In the hurdles, I was running 14.6. Jane Frederick was running 13.20. High jump, he said I was jumping five, six feet to clear 5.8. You need to learn how to lay out. The, 200, the shot put, even. 200 meters, he said, this is where I know what I'm talking about. I removed the hurdles. You can run 23 seconds. She's running 25. But when you run the hurdles, she's running 13.20 and you're running 14.6. Technique. So breaking it down, the technique, and understanding what I was trying to do. And then he, the long jump he was a given. The javelin, I was okay. He said, in the 800, it's just about your mental. You know, you can run 209 any time you want to, but you also run 240, and that's not going to cut it. <laughs> so... Uh, at 18 years of age, you got to break it down. You got to be hard on her, but also be supportive and having someone that's going to be true. You know, and regardless if Bobby, if I wasn't married to him, I would want him to coach me because I've seen how he's worked with athletes and, and produced some of the best. The last part of that question, just to touch on it, is is there a right or a perfect age to start out a multi eventer I think that for me, what was good for me was that our coaches put us in events at a very young age. We didn't know what we were doing. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know I was going to be a multi-eventer. I mean, we did triathlon on the track. It's run, jump, and throw. Mm -hmm. You know, not going out there biking and swimming. Nothing against the people that do that. Do that. But anyway. <laughs> a different kind of triathlon. We were throwing softball. We were running. I didn't know how to three-step the hurdles. So I would say... Young people, they should be having fun at a young age, enjoying it. Make it as fun as possible, you know, and then eventually they will continue to evolve. But while they're having fun, teach them technique, you know. So if they're going to learn how to throw the javelin, then make sure they got the proper technique, the hips, where the power come from. It's not the arm, it's in the legs and it's in the hips. Because I was like, I can't throw that shot put, it's too heavy. But when I learned that I could use my power working with Art Venegas, all of a sudden it would go 16 meters without me even trying. When I was trying, it would be 11 <laughs> meters. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, try, don't try so hard. Why is it now, in your opinion, would you say that uh, the records are not getting broken uh, as quicker um, like before. Because Carolina Kluth got bored. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, 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 in the multi-events, it to me, it takes time. And uh, I see a, a trend of young ladies right now that I think in the next world championship that it's going to take 7,000 points to win. Yes. You know, but I also see where an athlete like, I really thought Carolina was, would yeah, be the I, one, I but I never too. realized that. But she, she, she literally got bored. She said, right. you know what, I'm tired of beating these other ladies. I'm making a ton of money in Sweden. What's it, what else? And then right. she, went, and she I, went and did other events. Right, and, and I think that's what ended yeah. up happening with the, the multi-events is that some of our greatest talent decide they want to go and specialize in one or be the running there are a lot of broadcasts events. that we do and we talk about so and so being a former heptathlete yes. who now does the high jump yeah, right. or the hurdles or something so yeah, yeah I, that, that, that definitely is the case <laughs>